2015 was the time when I wrote my first ever code in C. The inner child in me got so happy after I printed my first weird looking pattern on my screen. A little later, I learned a couple of more languages like C++, Java, built a couple of weird simple games, then delved into the world of competitive programming for a while. And then, little did I know that this foundation would help me to crack companies like Amazon, Salesforce, Google, etc. in a decade. But looking back, and especially with the advent of AI, there are so many things that I would do differently to make my learning process smoother, faster, and more impactful. So if I were to start learning to code all over again, here's exactly what I would do and what I would like to avoid. And I hope this video is a learning experience for you guys, especially if you are starting off with your coding journey. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I would do and that's something I already did back during my days was picking up programming language and sticking to it for the first six months. See, when I started my coding journey, I was new to this world of programming. I had no experience with programming at all. So I picked my first programming language, which was a low level programming language called C and I learned it very well. That's something I would love to repeat. So I would spend around good three, four, five, six months, whatever it would take me to feel confident in that language. I know many of you would say that, you know, Python is probably the best language to start or some other, you know, high level languages. But I think you should always start with a low level programming language like C or C++. See, all these programming languages like Java, Python, Go, anything that you name off have all their ancestors rooted in C, C++. So if you're starting off your journey with a low level programming language idea of pointers memory allocation all these things become so so crisp and clear yeah it might be hard at the start but you would learn to appreciate these things as well and this would really really help you to go a long way and pick any programming language of your choice later down the line the first six months i would focus on c and not really try to distract myself i know these days with a lot of content and awareness around and especially in this world of ai and ml there are a lot of distractions to students like so when they join a particular college or a course they feel like they have to learn a lot of of things but the problem is they don't have their fundamentals in place so keeping that in mind what i would really try to do is i know that i have to learn these things somewhere down the line but for the first few months i would just focus on the very basics and try to learn one programming language probably c in this case really really well also parallelly i would try to learn html and css next after i'm comfortable with the programming language that is seen in this case i would start with data structures yes data structures are not algorithms yet i would try to build the various data structures by hand and with the help of a low level programming language because that will really strengthen the concept going forward once this is done then only i will really learn another programming language maybe c++ and can get started with algorithms or on the other hand what i can do is i will learn Java. Java is something that anyway I have to learn either via coursework or it's something that I can start early maybe in the third or fourth semester once I am done with this. Also with Java comes your object oriented programming concept because that's also something I would learn. Now in the first two years of my college after I am comfortable with the programming language preferably C++ there is not much difference between C and C++ once you know C it's all about knowing a couple of more things and you are set with C++ and along with that I would also learn STL and delve into the world of competitive programming. Yes, competitive programming is a good way of increasing our problem solving skills and it's a good time pass especially when you're not very conversant with development and software engineering and probably the first two years of your college life are the best time to do CP. You can participate in various coding competitions for the love and thrill of it and also who knows if you win a couple of competitions you might get popular in college as well which would be a very nice feeling and will boost up your motivation. Alternatively if you're conversant with development you can also go to hackathons and participate Participate, but I would try to participate a lot in competitions. Now, once I'm conversant with one or two programming languages, I also have an idea about data structures, algorithms, done a little bit of CP as well. I would try to pick one particular text. So if I have learned Java, then I would choose backend development with Java using Spring. If you have learned JavaScript, you would probably choose Monster. Any language, any framework of your choice works over here. But I would focus more on the basic first level principles. I would also learn a bit of JavaScript anyway for the front end development part. And I would try to build full stack end to end projects. Maybe your front end framework will react in the front end and maybe Java bring in the back end will help. I would choose Java, preferably because Java is widely used in all of the major MNC companies yet till date. If I can, I would also try to learn a basics of AI, ML, especially Gen AI, prompt engineering, all these things, and try to inculcate these 
things or features into my projects especially because AI and ML is in the hype right now. Now one thing which a lot of people doesn't really talk about especially as a student that okay building projects is fine but this is the time also I will try to focus a lot on my core software engineering fundamentals like networking, operating systems, databases. Yeah I can build a lot of cool projects superficially by learning the syntaxes and commands but that's not really gonna help me in the long run and also won't help me to land any job. As a student and as a fresher I would be grilled a lot on this core fundamental principles and that is why I would really really take my course work of databases, operating systems, networking and core computer science engineering subjects very very seriously. Now that's something I would like to change because that's probably something I took a bit lightly when I was in my college. So networking fundamentals like HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, all these things were a long way in helping you understand system design later. I would also try to focus on learning Git and version control, Linux and shell scripting, Docker, Kubernetes and basic idea about CI CD pipelines like Jenkins, Circle CI, a little bit about low level design and design patterns and high level design concepts like load balancing, caching strategies, sharding, DB duplication, etc. So what happens is ideally, you know, back in college, uh, we used to build products or projects in silos. I mean, probably I would make a project and I, then I would be very happy if it's working and I won't properly test it out. I would just use the happy part, show it to my friends, they would use it and that's it. So that's the reason you won't really bother about, for example, the importance of DevOps and deployment, right? Importance of version control. For that reason, to understand its significance, what I would really focus on is getting an internship. So I would try for one or two internships like one internship rather during the summer break after my fourth semester and one mandatory internship after during my sixth semester summer break internship is something again i took very lightly but i feel that before you join a corporate job it's very important to get that feel of how you work in the corporate and all these things all these advanced topics which i mentioned which you might not get to learn as a student right when you join a company work as an intern you would anyway get to know these things i would try to intern in a startup because an internship can range between three to six months so the time is anyway very short so I would need to join a company where my work responsibility which will be much more and my trajectory will be very fast. So if you work for any company, if you get a good internship, you can add that to your resume, you can add that to your experience section, right? And also it will help you to learn these things. So what I would definitely try is to grab at least one internship, preferably two. But I would also take note of the fact that before getting an internship, I should have a little bit of development knowledge. Otherwise, I won't be able to get that internship. Now, here's another controversial thing that I would like to point out after I have gone into my third year I wouldn't really focus on doing competitive programming unless and until I have a passion for it I have a knack for it then it's a different thing but if I feel that competitive programming is really not my thing or maybe I'm just decent in it I won't really push myself to do great in it I wouldn't want to be a master or a candidate master in code forces the reason being very simple see competitive programming is very intense right and it takes a lot out of you it takes a lot out of your time and you can give that time to learn other software engineering concepts or development or anything that will help you out in the industry. I'm not saying that competitive programming won't help you out. Yeah, it definitely increases your problem solving skills. But sometimes I feel it's a bit of an overdo because those level of questions are not really asked anywhere. And at the same time, you miss out on a lot of other topics. As a software engineer, you need to have that horizontal understanding of things rather than, you know, going too deep in one particular area, which is the world of algorithms in competitive programming space. That is why I would probably avoid competitive programming after a while. I mean, I would still do it for the love of it, but I want to really push myself to be like a God level competitive programmer and rather I would use that time to learn other software engineering concepts, which I mentioned in the video. That's something I would do because I started competitive programming in my sixth semester. I did probably a couple of months, so although that really changed my life because that introduced me to the world problem solving and algorithms but going back if i can have this structure out for me i would probably not get into that direction and i would try to focus more on software engineering having said that if you feel that cp is your stronghold please go for it also i would start solving data structure deep code problems from my sixth semester especially if i'm from a tier one tier two college where these companies fang and other top product based companies come visit our campus if that's not the case maybe i can try to participate in competitions as i used to which helped me to make a lot of connections alternatively i would also try to attend a lot of meetups and build connections out of that another thing which i would definitely not do is running after brands especially in today's age because when i passed out yes brands were helpful because we didn't have a lot of options at that time and also 
I pass out from a tier three college. Right now, there are a lot of other good companies as well, apart from the ones that you know well of. And also, these fan companies are even okay to give you a chance if you don't have a great brand in your resume. So, what I would try doing is first, I will join a startup, right, and gain two years experience in that role because I feel in a startup the learning trajectory is generally high because in a very short span of time you would get to learn a lot of things, wear multiple hats, and later on when I have around two two and a half years of solid experience, I would try for SD two roles in fan companies also to get a brand, especially. If I'm from a tier three college and the brand matters to me, yeah, I definitely admit that brand is important. But you no, know, that's something I would probably keep for SD two roles when I have the technical know-how on the low-level implementation side, and now I want to take more responsibilities on the design side and work with things at scale. One thing which I would definitely not do is if I don't get my dream offer. I would say things like, "Hey, I'm not gonna join this company for three, four lakhs package. Rather, I would spend some time to, you know, do self development, uh, self coding, self reputation, and then, you know, start with the dream offer of my life." Now, that's something I never did back during my time as well. I joined a service based company with a very meager package, and then after a year, I got a call from Amazon, and I got that call from Amazon simply because I had that one year experience. So, experience sometimes helps. Even that experience might not be very fruitful, but experience on paper also helps sometimes. So that is why don't lose out on experience, thinking that you know I would utilize that time to do self preparation. That never helps, and that's something I won't really advise you to. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers about what I wanted to you know cover in this video and the way I would really look to sort out my college life from the coding perspective and software engineering perspective of things. I hope that this video was helpful, and if it did, press the like button and subscribe to my channel for more such content. Also, don't forget to comment down below your dream company, and I would be more than happy to go through all of them. That's it. We'll see you in some other video. Till then, stay safe. Goodbye.